Seventh chapter of Micah for the adults. If you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads thus <laughs> Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and God Gilead as in the days of old, according to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I shew unto him marvelous things. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth, their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent, they shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth inequity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? Uh -huh. He retaineth not his anger for else because he delighteth in mercy. Yes. Uh -huh. He will turn again, he will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Yes. In verse 20, thou wilt perform the truth of Jacob and the mercy of Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Amen. 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 I read for you Amen. Micah the seventh chapter, verses 14 through 20. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and the application of his most holy word. Amen. 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 Right before David was going to lay down his pen and Solomon would pick up his proverbial pen and start penning Proverbs. I know I'm right about it. It was Psalm 150. Yes, Somebody ought to hear me right now. This psalm has a way of getting ready to heal somebody's concern if you allow God to speak. I dare you to give God some room right now in your heart for healing. For healing. For some hope. Anybody up here need a little hope? so big that you can't pray. Keep living, because you didn't know folks say amen. Keep living. When you have to go in the room with mama for the last time, prayer might escape you. You got to look at a child that you've given your best to and they turn their back on you. Prayer might escape you. But the psalmist has some help for you this morning. Psalm 150, just join me. He said when you can't pray, Sister Speedy, the first word, he said praise. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He says praise ye. That, that, that means praise you. That means praise me. Praise what, Psalmist? He said not us, but he put a word in there and said praise the Lord. Somebody ought to say it something more than, than, than a quiet okay right there. For all the problems you got, all the crazy folk in your family, all the sickness in this world, all the bills you got at home and no money, praise ye the Lord. Oh, oh, okay, I know folk bothering you right now and you're going to miss it. So he said, you miss it the first time. So he says, now he just give you two words. He said, praise God. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God. Where? In the saint, in his sanctuary. Then he says it again. Praise him. In the ferment of his power. What else you want me to do? Praise him.
say to thee how thou owest unto me even thy own self besides. Yeah, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou will also do more than I say. Hmm. But with all, prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. There, salute the Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Archippus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. 
Amen. 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 Our key verse, verse 11. Which in time pass. Stop the movement, still in the scriptures. Which in times past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We have been on a journey for a few Sundays. I know things should have changed for you on Father's Day on July the, June the 21st. The message out of the Gospel of John, God asked the question, who's your daddy? Yes, sir. We went away to Detroit and returned and God had me to come and return to your presence with a message from Jeremiah in the 20th chapter saying I'm retracting my resignation yes, on June the 28th. Then we moved into this relationship with Philemon yes. on the first Sunday of July, July the 5th, and he was telling us how to become profitable. Yes. On last Sunday we had the follow-up that says how to become profitable mm -hmm. to not T-W-O, but t o uh -huh. That God was saying to us that we could also become profitable. And, and this week, of, over the last two weeks, we focus our view on this letter that Paul wrote to a man named Philemon. Uh, I, I told you to consider it by some theologians it was a pastoral letter because Philemon was the head of his household and in the second verse of the scripture it says at the church in thy house so it lets me know that he was writing to the person in charge of the house i wish two more people was listening because there should be some letters that should come to the house that's written and should be ascribed to the people that live there. Philemon received the letter, but he shared it with the people of the house. God was trying to do something with this letter of Philemon. He was trying to show us some things. And as we looked at this text, we found some critical characters in the text. Philemon, who was going to be the owner of the house and the purveyor and receiver of God's word. But there was another critical character there named Onesimus, and it's the slave, it's the one who had went contrary to his master. He had stolen from Philemon and ran away. I wish you heard me. Because oh, yeah. well, you, 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 you'd have parked it on Onesimus, but I see a few Onesimus in, in here right now. Uh, if you was real honest, somebody would say, I look a little like Onesimus. I, 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 I've taken things from the master and I run away from the house. So if we were honest in here, you have not always parked in the pews on a Sunday. You have not always made it to Bible study. You didn't pray every time it was time to pray. There are a few Onesimus us in the pews right now. God was trying to get a letter that would be resembling of the church at America. I know he wrote it to Philemon, but he could have addressed it to 901 Mariposa Street. He could have wrote the letter and put 412 Grenadine Way. He could have said it right to my house. And if you're honest, you can put your address in there and say God could have wrote the letter to you. There were times that God told you to go and you said no. And there were times that God said no and you said go. We all have had a little Onesimus in us. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us have been on the other side of right at least one time in your life. And I, I, I found in the Bible they say a little leaven, a little sin, it'll leaven, it'll cause the whole lump to rise. So, so I'm, I'm trying to tell you before you leave the message too quick, it's a reason that God has us on this third Sunday still dealing with Philemon because he said, Hodge, you still got some Onesimus in the church house. It's still some sin 
in the church. Uh, it's still some folk who he need to hear that God has made a way for Onesimus. And, and the first thing we said Onesimus had to come to the realization, he had to recognize he was a sinner. I wish one more Onesimus at 901 Mariposa recognized you have sinned and you've come short of the glory of God. I wish one more Onesimus would say, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Onesimus had to realize, you know, being a slave, he might have thought, uh, I don't need to be under this master anymore. I want to leave. And sometimes we get like that with God. We, we get tired of God being in our business. We get tired of God telling us no. And the things we enjoy, the Bible always show up, Sister Speed, and say, we can't do it. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. You know some things that you could have went on. You'd have been fine with the Bible if they'd have left it out of there. Yeah. You know there are some things that if they wouldn't have put that in the Bible, you'd be a better steward of the Bible oh, today. Oh, you don't know, don't play with me. I'll call your name out up in here. I'll talk about your stuff up in here. We know that there are some things that they could have left out the Bible. Love your enemies. Oh, I'm on your front porch ringing your doorbell. You know I'm talking to you. There's some folk that God shouldn't have put that in there. Pray for them that spitefully use you. I will. I pray they give me my money back. Oh, you, 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 you know. You know, you know, you know. Come on now, let's get out of there. There's a little Onesimus up in this house. Somebody say amen. There are some folk that if they don't come to church, hallelujah. And when they come in, praise the Lord. There are some folk that we can get along without. Onesimus said, run away. And we realized he had to recognize he was a sinner. And once you recognize, be like Onesimus. I want a few Onesimus at the church that once they recognize it, he repented. Amen. When you realize that you were trying to get to Oakland and you wind up going across the Bay Bridge, don't just keep driving because you're too stubborn to turn around. Somebody ought to say, I went past the mark. I need to turn around and come back the right way. Some of us so mean, so hard-headed, so stubborn, we'll be going all past the Embarcadero. Talking about, I know where I'm going. You'll be all the way past Kizar Old Stadium, passing the airport, talking about, I'm going to go down by San Jose and come back around the other way. I wanted the long way around. Some of us just need to turn around. Say, I need to turn around. Onesimus turned around. The Bible says he repented. God redeemed him. Then God sent him back to his master's house. There are some times that God is going to allow you to repent. He's going to redeem you. He's going to bring you back, but then he's going to send you back. If, if, if more folks would adhere to that, then Zion Hill could be full. If, if I baptized 88 people the first year I was here, like they said on the cartoon, which way did they go? <laughs> if we took in 162 people in the first year, where are they at now? We have to return. The Onesimus had enough God in him. God has to be like an electromagnet in your life. Amen. When you're trying to go and he's pulling, his force has to be stronger than your will. And that's the reason Ezra said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked way. He said then. See, some of y'all have not made it to your then. Some of y'all are still searching for the then. Uh, he said then when you hear from heaven. That's why you come to church and it's not interesting. Hello, two folks. That's why you come to church and you don't change. Hello, three people. That's why that liquor bottle is waiting on you. Hello, four, five people. That's why you still got blunts in your pocket. Hello, Six, seven people. That's why you don't like your neighbor. Hello, everybody. <laughs> he said, Then will I hear from heaven. Forgive your sins and heal your name. Onesimus made it past his day. God returned him back. Then he reversed his situation. He made him profitable. 
See, sinners become profitable at church. That was what we talked about the first Sunday. Then the next Sunday, th this is the difficult part. Because I got some Philemon's up in here. Folk have hurt you. Folk done lied on you. Folk done talked about you to people who are supposed to be your friend. And you still trying to figure out why your friend's still talking to him. Hello over there. Somebody heard me. Uh, but, but, but there are some Philemon's in the church house. Those are the folk. I, I ain't never did nothing wrong. I've always did right. And folk always stuck me, mixed up, mistreated. They, they don't understand me. I, I, I'm confused about how they treat me this way. And Philemon said, I didn't do nothing to Onesimus. Paul said, but I did something for you. It's in the text right there. He said, I gave you more than Philemon than Onesimus took from you. You missed it. He says to Philemon, he says, I, I know he took your stuff, man. I know he ran away. I know Jody got your girl and, and gone. He says, but don't worry about that so much. He said, I know they ate up the last piece of chicken and didn't even wash the dishes in the sink. He said, I know it was crumbs all over the floor and you was looking down there saying, I know. They didn't eat that last piece of chicken. The piece that I got my mouth watered for. He said, he said, I know they did do all of that. And then they took a bath and left a ring in the tub. He said, yeah, they did all of that. <laughs> he says, but, Mr. Philemon, yes, yeah. when you were born in sin, uh -huh. shaping in iniquity, uh -huh. hell was your address. He said, I preached the gospel to you. You repented and God reclaimed you. He said, have I not done more for you than that piece of chicken, a dirty man to Amen. So, 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 so after he got Onesimus together, he says, first of all, you have to understand the same gospel that saved you, Philemon. The gospel you preach, Philemon, is the same gospel that saved Onesimus. So he is now not your servant anymore. He's not your brother. So he says your family has changed. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. He said your family structure isn't like it used to be. He said the folk you hate known is your brothers and your sisters. Unless you're not in the family. See, you got to know that you in the family. See, there's some stuff that my brother did to me that I can't even remember anymore. Because that's my brother. See, if you can articulate everything wrong somebody did, God is somewhere writing your stuff down. Right. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right now. So if you want God to erase it, you got to start erasing. He says, Philemon, your forgiveness is connected to your forgiving. You missed it. You missed it. That's why you're going to be mean and tore up when you leave here. Your forgiveness of others is connected to God forgiving you. Amen. That's the reason I got so many constipated people in church outside. Because we stuffed with unforgiveness and we locked out of forgiveness. I've learned to forgive people, Brother Logan, because I need God to forgive me. When I start thinking about it, it pales in comparison the stuff that you did to me the stuff I did to God. Yeah. Amen. David says, uh, Lord, I want to hide your word in my heart that I might not sin yeah. against you anymore. Yeah. Every sin that's committed is against God. Yeah. Yeah. So every forgiveness that's given is towards God. Yeah. I know I'm right because Jesus on the cross, he says, Father, uh -huh. forgive them. Yeah. For they know not what they do. I got to get out of here. Boy, I wanted to stay with this thing longer. Philemon, his, uh, 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 watch this, Onesimus' name meant useful. You missed it. Even when he was unprofitable, God had given him a name that meant useful. Even when I was lost and turned out, God had a name waiting on me that was going to make me useful. You missed your chance to say thank you. When they were saying, here come Tone, the robber, the thief, the crackhead, God was saying, here come Pastor Hart, clear the way. You missed your chance to shout. What folk used to call you? That name will change if you hold on to God's unchanging hand. When they were saying, look at Miss Carrie's son and shaking their head, God was saying, look at Miss Carrie's son and shaking his head. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God has for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Oh.
champion record. The boy's name was Onesimus. He had some inning that was going to come out one day. Don't let folk fool you. There's something on the inside that one day is going to come out. Oh, greater is he that's on the inside. I wish I could preach this thing the way I feel. But, but, but Philemon, Philemon, he had a name of his own. His name means one who kisses. One who is affectionate, one who is agreeable, one who is in relationship. He didn't even know what God had in store for him. Anybody up in here, there's something that you wait on, and God has already put it in you. Philemon didn't know. I got some forgiveness, and my name speaks to it. God had already prepared it. I got to go. Uh, he told Philemon, remember his family, regain his faith. Restored through forgiveness. But today I just want to touch briefly on the text we have. And I got to go. Paul says in 19th verse. Uh -huh. I Paul have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Albeit I do not say to thee that thou owest unto me. Even thy own self besides. Yes. Paul is saying because I preached the gospel. Yes, sir. You heard it. Yes. This is reconciliation. Somebody say, this is reconciliation. I can't unpack it. We'll find it again one day soon. Verse 20, he said, yeah, brother. Let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Somebody say, this is renewal. See, when folk had counted you out, God had placed a place where you were going to be renewed and refreshed. Somebody ought to say, glory and praise thought they had used up the best of you and the best has not even been seen in me. Folks thought they took advantage of me. My best is still ahead of me. My best days have not been uncovered yet. I've not preached my best message yet. I've not prayed my best prayer yet. I haven't sang my first song yet. I still got some things that God has on the inside of me. And some folk may blink and miss it. But I thank God he placed it. And one day he's going to bring forth. I'm going to be renewed Anybody up in here can stand on your feet and say, ah, the best is yet to come. The best of me you can get. That man who thought he used you. Girl, you need to call him and say, boy, the best of me has not even been exposed. But all the women thought they made a fool out of We need to call him and tell him, the best of me has not even been exposed. The best of me is coming forth. I shall come forth. That's new gold one day. God is still pressing on me. Watch this, I gotta go, I gotta go. Uh, I, I gotta get to the last part of it because y'all tired of Philemon. Y'all don't want Onesimus and Philemon in the house no more. Y'all tired of them. So we gonna get rid of them today. How do you get rid of them? You gotta go to the end of the scripture, the last word. God says, Amen. Oh, I understand that there was reconciliation, renewal, but this is a requirement. Amen. It means, so be it. It means, I agree. It means, so as it is said. This small little letter, 445 words. The last word, amen. You missed it. If there is going to be healing, in the house, yes, somebody's got to say, Amen. 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 There are 52 amens in the synoptic gospel. Yes, John says, Amen, 25 times in his own gospel. Yes. Paul concludes on, his general on, epistles with the word, Amen. Yes. In Revelations 3 and 14, Jesus refers to himself as the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. You don't hear me? Matthew 6 and 13 said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Amen. Matthew 28 and 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Mark 16 and 20 picks it up. And he said, they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord's working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. You missed it. Luke 24 and 53 says, and they were continually in the temple praising, blessing God. Amen. You missed it again. Jesus' brother Jude shows up, want to get a little piece of it. And he says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Oh, shucks now. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. Amen. Oh, shucks. Come on, hot. I think I will. Hebrews trying to tell you something. It says, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you, that it may be well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You missed your chance. John says, little children, keep yourself away from idols. Amen. Revelations 1 and 18 said, I am he that liveth, was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. If you don't believe them, uh, Jesus in the Bible, uh, stop by in Revelations 13, 14, and said, 3, 14, and said, I am the Amen. Then he went and did some with this Bible. Watch this. Uh, he put 66 books, uh, called it a Bible, 1,189 chapters. You don't hear me. Uh, 31,102 verses. You don't hear me. 78,137 words. You don't hear me. He put 3,116,480 letters together. You don't hear me. He took it and had 40 men to write it. He put it in a 1,200 language. The longest verse is Esther 8978 words. The shortest verse is John 1135. Jesus wept up. He followed it up with Job 3 and 2 and said, Job, answer. You don't hear me. He gave me 12,600 promises. You don't hear me. He did. He came back and gave me 8,000 predictions. He gave, he asked me 3,294 questions. He used the word God 4,094 times. He used the word Lord 6,781 times. But guess what he did? He hung all them words on one little word. He closed his book and he merely said, Amen. He said, so it be. He said, so as a man be, so shall it Profitable. Anybody here, you want to get to your finally. I want you to know that I'm finally profitable. All folks that look down on me, one day uh, there'll be a crack in the sky. If they want to see me, uh, they're going to have to look up. Uh, I'm going to meet Jesus. Uh, anybody here want to meet Jesus? Uh, you can say finally. It's finito. Uh, it's over. A uh, river dirty. Goodbye. I gotta move on. Uh, Father, even thank you uh, for stopping by Zion Hill, trying to help us to be profitable. I need folk in the choir to be profitable. Are you gonna be profitable? Or are you gonna let God use you? I need some usher that's ready to be profitable. Let God use you. 
well. Somebody ought to say, finally, I'm profitable. I see in 2 Corinthians 3 and 11, it says, finally, brethren, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, uh, and God, God shall give you peace. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Uh, Philippians 3 and 1 says, finally, uh, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Somebody ought to say, I got a new walk. Uh, Zion Hill Baptist Church is to prepare God's people to live and love as commanded by the Word of God. Our responsibility is to work until we hear the voice of our Lord say, well done. He's saying that, 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 uh, 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 that all I need is Jesus, but you don't live like that. First time somebody eat the last chicken wing, we fall out over 
Stetson hats, chicken wings, smells in the bathroom. We fall out over all kind of stuff. Fall out over people looking at me. They be looking at me, I look back at them. Where was you at? I was in church, where was you at? I wasn't in church, I was in the Lord's house. There's a certain way I'm not going to act in the Lord's house. Well, 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 wait, well, before you clap, let, don't, don't, let, don't let me bend the text on you because it say the earth is the Lord. So, so wherever I'm acting, I'm in his house. <laughs> However I'm acting, I'm in his vessel because the Bible said I was bought for a price and I'm not my own anymore. So therefore, I shouldn't just be acting. I should be following the script. Some of you have, are independent actors. You're off script. And the director showed up this morning to tell you, get back on script, baby. Quit acting that way. That's not who you are anymore. That's not you. you you're a different person. You have been changed. How did I change? Because the Bible says that Christ be in you. You become a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. Somebody should say bye-bye. Some of y'all won't even say it because you content being who you are. You happy who you are. But God is saying if Christ be in you. Because if Christ's not in you, you got a destination with hell. And when the doors are open, you need to come and surrender to Christ. To get you out of the crisis so that you'll be able to do what? Say thank you anyhow. God, thank you that I didn't die with that hell in me. I pray you are being edified, the lost being evangelized, and that our Jesus is being glorified by our ministry. You are welcome to join us in person. Here is our service information. Zion Hill Baptist Church, 901 Mariposa Street, Rodeo, California, 94572. Phone number 510-799-4647. Website www.marchtozion.org. Service times. Sunday school, 9.30 a.m. Sunday worship, 11 a.m. Wednesday Bible study, 7 p.m. Thursday choir worship, 7 p.m. To receive notice of new postings on YouTube, subscribe to our site.